Well, <laughs> hello again and welcome to another video of my name's Peter Waters, G3OJV. And um, I enjoy messing about with antennas, you know. It's one of the things that uh, you never really get tired of. But I was reading the other day about an antenna which I'd completely forgotten about. It was, it was in the 1960s. It was called the Joystick. <laughs> it was the Partridge Electronics VFA Joystick made by a guy called George Partridge, who I think lived in uh, Kent. And um, it was quite widely used in the 60s. <laughs> Let me tell you a bit more about it. Well, it's not exactly that warm out here. So I'm going to take the opportunity of uh, going indoors and talking to you uh, from there. Right, well, <laughs> the joystick antenna, I had forgotten about it. Actually, I think I said 1960 when I was in the garden, but I think it's had its heyday in 1974 or thereabouts, something like that. Um, it was the brainchild of um, a guy called George Partridge, whose original call was G3CED, G3 Charlie Echo Delta, and subsequently he changed his call sign to G3 VFA. Now, I don't know the full details, I, I, but anyway, he changed his call sign to G3 VFA to fall in line with this joystick antenna, the variable frequency antenna. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what a variable frequency antenna is. Does it mean to say that you can move the frequency around within the uh, antenna or that the antenna changes frequency. I think the implication was that the antenna, the whole antenna was tunable. I've been doing some uh, research, not deep research, but on the on the internet. And I, I found a picture of the joystick and I just showed it on the, on the screen here. And as you can see, it's basically a stick. Um, I think the construction was um, two metal tubes joined in the centre by a wooden dowel, and on that wooden dowel was wound the coil. And uh, that actually was what was known as the joystick. Now, the curious thing was that um, it had a single wire feeder. Now, just think about that for a moment, a single wire feeder. Um, that doesn't really hang together. Basically, the joystick was a random wire with a loading coil on the end and a bit, bit more just to um, help it uh, resonate. So the actual frequency it resonated at um, depended how long that, that wire was. <laughs> it's hard to believe but I looked at the advert um, and with the joystick you could buy special joystick feeder cable. Now this was a single wire cable, it was a single piece of flex cable, and, but it was a special, it was a special bit, of, bit of cable known as the joy, joystick cable. <laughs> there are all sorts of claims made for it about how well it worked and um, it would help you beef up your signal um, and uh, it would work in all sorts of uh, locations and uh, if you put it outside um, it worked better than inside and if you put it up on a mast it works even better. Well I suppose it's bound to work better because that so-called feeder was longer, in other words the aerial wire was longer. There was many arguments and I was actually present at one of these arguments, one of the rallies. I never actually met George personally but I, I was uh, at a rally um, where he had a stand and there was, there was a lot of arguments going on about uh, whether this joystick was anything other than a, a coil on the end of a bit of wire and uh, George was, would defend it vehemently, um, understandably. I suppose it was, <laughs> it was quite a masterpiece of marketing really because it, it it, it, it developed this sort of mystique and it was the antenna of the day. Um, but to be fair, to be honestly, to be fair, it did actually work um, because there's plenty of uh, users that would vouch for it. And uh, I can see how it worked, but the claim that uh, George made was slightly different to the actual reality. The antenna was no more than a length of wire determined by how far away the joystick was from the transmitter and uh, at the end of that wire was a, was a, was a coil. 
Um, you also were encouraged to buy the Joy Match. Now the Joy Match was the uh, little ATU which would help match the antenna and I think that's where the variable frequency antenna came into it. Um, the Joy Match was nothing more than a, uh, a Pi network in a, in a little box uh, but it, you know, it helped, uh, helped uh, it work. So if he sold so many and if he had so many um, satisfy customers, <laughs> forget the ones that wouldn't touch it, but if you had so many satisfied customers, how, 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 did, how did such a simple antenna like that work? I think there were probably three reasons why it did actually work. Um, first was that um, it, it was widely used on 160 meters and 160 meters was the band on which uh, a high proportion of new licensed amateurs cut their teeth <clears throat> and so there was a lot of activity on 160 meters and uh, probably you were always uh, no more than a mile or a couple of miles from uh, a, another ham station. So there was a lot of activity, a lot of point to point activity on 160 meters um, at that time. It was also um, around about the time of sunspot maximum so that meant to say that uh, it uh, was, was being used in some very under very good conditions. I mean that that wouldn't it, that wouldn't uh, affect 160 meters, of course, but uh, it certainly would explain um, why it worked better uh, than perhaps you might expect on the HF bands. And the other the other reason, which I think is quite an important uh, uh, reason, is that. In those days, we had a very low level of um, noise level on the bands uh, because the joystick um, was recommended to you could use it indoors, uh, uh, they said, and other were stations used it indoors. I can't imagine being able to use a joystick indoors now, so the noise level was much lower. And apart from the passing car with um, uh, spark plug problems, um, the noise level was, was really low, so that was uh, in, in its favour as well. So for all those reasons, it probably uh, did give uh, stations that uh, own them uh, quite a few QSOs. But you, <laughs> you really can't get away from the fact that uh, uh, the antenna was um, had a little bit of mystique about it. Um, do we call it um, the joystick, or do we call it the magic magic broomstick? Um, do we call it the magic antenna? I don't know. It uh, certainly. Um, uh, had a lot of customers. I'm sure there's still uh, people out there that um, that uh, re recall those days. And uh, it, I mean, if you've got any uh, any input on this, be be uh, feel feel free to put it on put some notes uh, under this video. Uh, your thoughts on it, your experiences on it, and uh, who knows? Perhaps somebody else has got one there still in use. <laughs> if you have, let us know. So there we are. That was the joystick uh, VFA antenna, uh, as I remember it anyway. Thanks for watching this video, and uh, in the meantime, <laughs> enjoy your ham radio.